And for today, when we are drawing parallels and similarities with uh, pagan written narratives uh, for the sake of polemics, when it comes to um, this topic of chaos, we have, as I mentioned, two accounts. We have Babylonian creation epic Enumelish, where Marduk battles the ocean goddess Tiamat. And we have this Ugaritic or Canaanite account where, where Baal fights Yum. Goddess Yam. Uh, without going in deep um, length or in great length, what can we say about these two accounts? How do they match or differ when it comes to the biblical account of, uh, of uh, creation, especially when it comes to Genesis 1 2? Well, obviously, in, in the Babylonian account, as well as the, the account with Baal, you have two deities who are fighting. And they're not, neither one of them is the top deity. Neither one of them is the actual sovereign creator. So it's very fascinating to me how in most of the pagan literature, almost all of the pagan literature at the time, the, the supreme god took a back seat to everything. It's really interesting how you have the different people groups who would kind of claim a certain deity, right? So they would conquer a territory or something and they'd, they'd put up their deity there. or And their deities weren't all that jealous of one another. Like you could worship multiple deities because they were over different areas and they would give you different things and they weren't necessarily jealous. Like you can't worship other deities, whereas Yahweh is like that. So that, that's a very different thing when you come to the Bible and you see that Yahweh is a jealous God. That doesn't mean he is some sort of, he's got a negative personal trait. It means that he is the ultimate supreme deity who deserves the worship compared to the other places who worshiped lesser deities. They weren't even trying to worship the supreme creator because they didn't think they could get something out of him? I don't know. But there's an idea that there were territorial deities, right? So you wanted to worship the territorial deity of your area. You also wanted to worship the deities who were over the crops, the deities who could give you fertility, the deities who could do all of these particular things. So there was a slew of other deities who would grant you some very specific blessings and you had to petition that deity in order to get those blessings. So there's there's a very different flavor to all of that. It's like what they were interested what Babylon was interested in is why Marduk was their national deity. Marduk wasn't the ultimate creator. Same thing with the the area of Canaan. Baal wasn't the ultimate creator. But that's the one they were worshiping. So this story is showing how that particular God that they were worshiping got into power. And he did so by fighting other deities. And usually it was this chaos conf theme of the fighting of the sea and the taming of that. And the reason for that is because what they needed in order to found their civilization and to keep their civilization going were crops. You had to have people alive by eating. <laughs> so, so in order to create a city, you had to have crops that were sustaining that city. And that was very dependent on the weather and the seasons and all of that. And those there were particular deities who were over those. So that was kind of the center on that. But when you're looking at the story of Genesis 1, that's not the story of Genesis 1. It, it's just not. I don't think that Genesis 1 is talking about creation out of nothing, not because God didn't create everything out of nothing, but because they weren't thinking in terms of that. What Genesis 1 is talking about is the sovereign God of all creation who is ordering the entire cosmos. That's what Genesis 1 is about. It's not about how did we get to worship our ultimate deity. It was much broader than that, which was super unique because mostly they were just concerned about themselves and their own civilizations and their own kingdoms and 
you know, care about the rest of the world. So the Bible's very different from that. And you don't have the personification of God versus chaos. Now, I don't think that means you don't see chaos there, because I think you do. I think chaos is seen in very particular ways, but it's very different.